I would high five you right now, but I don't want you to drop the fish. No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> don't drop the fish. Whatever you do, don't lose the fish, Coyote. Oh no! <laughs> there it goes. Fire! A fire on the mountain. What's going on, Coyote Pack? And welcome back to Base Camp, the show where we don't do any camping at all. But we have fires. But no mountains today. No, well, there's <laughs> fires back there, but how do you guys yeah. feel about that new opening animation? I personally love the music. I think it's hilarious. I mean, I, I think it's funny. I don't know if it's set in stone. I'm curious to kind of hear what everyone thinks about it. Well, Coyote Pack, give us your feedback in the comments section below, but I have a feeling that this one is here to stay. <laughs> well, we're definitely having fun with it, right? Absolutely, and, and that's what this series fun. is all about, having fun. And today's even more fun than the last episode because Mario's back. Hey, it's What's me. What's going on? <laughs> Welcome to the show, Mario. How do you feel? I feel honored. Honored, yes. privileged, yes. part of the Base Camp program. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you guys. Welcome, welcome. We're glad to have you. Well, you have been on location with us for pretty much every episode other than diving for snapping turtles. Yeah. So the episode that we're visiting today is an oldie but a goodie. One of my favorites, Rainbow Trout Rescue Mission. So we're going to take you guys back to Montana. Mm. Special place yeah. with freezing cold rivers, as I remember. So <laughs> cold. Why is every episode that we do with fish always freezing cold. Because well, it's in the water. Because we're in the water, it takes you forever to catch the fish. Well, this, that's, <laughs> well, yeah, that's pretty fair. Actually, yeah. I caught the salmon pretty quickly, but the rainbow trout was quite the challenge to catch. And what's crazy is that Montana was bright and sunny and warm out, yet you get into that freezing mountain water and you think, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get this fish in one take. Didn't work out like that, guys. Oh, no, 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 no. So if you're ready and you yeah. guys are ready, let's return to Montana and head out on one epic rainbow trout rescue mission. Are you ready? All right, let's cue the video. Here we go. Play the footage. I'm Ooh, look at that sunglasses removed. I'm gonna go into a freezing cold. You're really proud of that, aren't you? I am. It's a good thing I didn't poke my eye out with that. Man, remember getting those shots? Oh, yeah. Man, your beard game kind of weak there. Yeah, let's pause that for a second. <laughs> A lot of you have written in the comments section. That's so a good stuff. That's, that's a good freeze frame right there. I don't know what that face is that I'm making. That is like one day shaven coyote. We've seen a lot yeah. of comments in the comments section. Coyote, your beard game is on point. I've been growing this beard now for about two and a half months, really since right when we left for Australia. I think that's the coyote that can see your beard right now, and he's like, what's that thing on your face, he's man? Like, he'd, he'd, what be proud of you? Beard? <laughs> he'd be proud of you. It is, it is yeah. getting shaved off before South Africa, but the fur yeah, beard be has been in major command as of recent. All right, if, I should have had this beard in Montana. It would have been fitting with the mountains. Yeah. Well, All right. Who knew? Yeah. Well, here we go. Keep going. Keep going. Here we go. This is going to get interesting. Again, another one of those quick intros. And that shot right there, pause that for a second. That arbitrary <laughs> jump into the water and splash shot. Remember when we did that? And yeah. We're like, well, this would have scared fish away. Totally unnecessary. Totally unnecessary and freezing cold. I think we did that like four or five times, didn't we? Yeah, I think we're we still did. trying to figure out the flow of, of how to make these videos. Well, like, again, just like the Snapping Turtle episode, we would shoot these B-roll high intensity action shots to be like, it's gotta be fast paced and action. Right. And then I fell off that cliff in Arizona. And we were like, no more of these arbitrary B-roll shots. Let's just use a drone, <laughs> which has worked out splendidly for me. All right, into the animation. All right, here we go. Can we watch the video for yeah, a little yeah, bit? Yeah, All yeah. right. <laughs> So that's the old you excited? logo. You excited? Snaking between the epic mountains that give Montana. That's a good shot. Man, look at the zoom range on that XA20. Yeah. Gorgeous oh, landscape. Love that shot. Crew and I are headed deep into the wilderness to Belt explore the freezing cold waters of Belt Creek. I miss Montana. Getting there will be a challenge. Of oh, this is when we were sponsored by General Motors. That's right. And there's those cows. Is that a Chevy Traverse? Is that Chevy where? Traverse? Oh, wait, wait. Pause that for a second. I forgot that it was, I think it was a behind the adventure episode where we showed me making the cow noises. Yeah. That was me making that cow noise. Yeah, that's not an actual cow. That's not an actual cow, well, but I never let's realized. Let's hear that back. <laughs> and that cow's looking at me with that grass hanging out of its mouth, number 620. He's like, dude, um, he's not you impressed. are not yeah. an Angus. Yeah, he's not impressed. Oh, I try to talk to him. Environment to encounter the rainbow and shark. that's a whitefish. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Some of those are not trout. Yeah. Man, weren't all those uh, river rocks like ankle breakers? Oh, man. Do you remember walking along the river? Yeah. Just going through this environment was crazy difficult. Now, what's funny, you know, I see you building this makeshift net. Right. And what, what was the saying that used to have no nets, no traps, no problem? No problem. That used to be the, like part of the 
concepts of the show. Right. I, I could do all this catching these things by hands, but actually where this inspiration came from was an episode of Man vs. Wild with Bear Grylls, where mm -hmm. I saw Bear take his shirt and build a net. And we, you know, in several of these episodes, we've had the opportunity to MacGyver mm -hmm. things with the environment. And we were like, okay, this would be cool. If we can come across a fish in a small pocket of water, maybe I can use that same tactic. And I watched the episode of Man vs. Wild, and it seemed like Bear did it in a couple of minutes. I'm telling you guys, it is so much harder well, than it looks. Yeah, we're going to see here in a second yeah. just yeah. how hard it was. But I, I just think it's funny how, you know, back uh, when we were making videos uh, with the MacGyver element, now we just... Now we just use nets. Yeah. Now, like, yeah. in Alaska, I think in Alaska originally we were like, you think we could do this again with a shirt net? Yeah. And immediately in the pre-production meeting you're like, no, we're going to use a legitimate net. Well, I think everybody, fish. including Alaska Fishing Game, was pretty convinced that it wasn't possible, period. It wasn't possible, period. So right. we wanted to give you every advantage yeah. we could. Yeah. In this case, we also had special permission to be doing this from right. Montana Fishing Game. Um, and that's important because this is not a way that you can actually legally catch a fish without right. a permit. So. Which is crazy that, in my mind, that you can have a fish hook go into a fish's mouth, but you're not allowed to catch with a net. But hey, the rules are the rules, right? And essentially, catch a fish. Oh, these B-roll shots. I remember how cold this was. And there are definitely trout down in that water. I did really see trout down there. But the, oh, yeah. The water was like 10 feet deep. is that I'm seeing lots of fish. Bad news. Deep water. Oh, there you go. I'll tell you right there. I was so, <laughs> it was so cold on that shot. How cold do you think the water really was? It was just above freezing. I, I remember I didn't have extra boots, mm -hmm. so I had to take off my shoes and wade across. Barefoot. Barefoot. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was so cold. The main course of the river. Out of any of the pockets of water I've seen today, this is probably the best spot for us to find a fish. Okay, pause it for a second, because I think what people don't realize is how long we were actually out there hiking up this river before we got to, like, these smaller pockets. And I remember having, you know, you were there, and actually Chance was on that shoot as well, mm -hmm. having to move the camera gear over all those ankle-breaking rocks and how much time it took for us to actually move from spot to spot. That yeah. was one of the most difficult things about Montana yeah. was moving around. Often we actually have to set up, like, a little base camp mm -hmm. on location, and that means moving gear constantly, uh, depending on what we're shooting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you know, uh, when you think about uh, back in these days, like we didn't really have a lot of experience doing this kind of thing with uh, catching fish. Like we didn't really know what we were doing at right. all going right. out there. Uh, we were just looking for fish, and we're like, hopefully, we'll have a situation where we might be able to catch one. Yeah. yeah. We didn't actually playing this out too well. It was all <laughs> hypothetical. I think I remember like that shot when I was standing yeah. on top of that cliff looking down, like there's fish down there. I'm like, water's like 10 feet deep. I was like, uh. but we knew in theory that exactly what we ended up stumbling upon would exist eventually. Small pockets of marooned water mm -hmm. where there may be fish that were trapped. So that's right. kind of the part we're getting to. Yep. All right, here we go. Check up in this corner here. You looked so enthused in that shot. I know how right cold there. we were already yeah. at this point. Right back in that corner. Oh, I remember seeing this fish. That was that moment. We were shooting these B-roll shots, and then I was like, I could see the tail fin going. I'm right. like, there, there's a fish. We actually did not even imagine that shooting, describing this pocket of water, that there would actually be a fish in it. Right, and, you know, we had seen other fish right. at this point in time, but they weren't catchable at no, all. Like, not even, not, even, not even close. And I think at this point, Mario, we were just like, at what point do we just call this? Like, yeah, is yeah. this even going to happen today? This was yeah. an episode that almost was scrapped because we True. were out there for so long being like, this, is, this isn't feasible. Yeah. How did Bear Grylls do this on Man vs. Wild? Must have just been right place, right I was right about time. to go get a uh, fly rod and, uh, right. you know. Try to, like, actually go fishing. Yeah. Because <laughs> we could see fish, but we couldn't catch them. But this ended up then being that moment where we, we found a pocket. Yeah, but it wasn't the end of the story. No. That is a rainbow trout. That trout was like, very, oh boy, I've been spotted. Incredibly timid. Uh, what I want to do is try to scoop them up. This is bear territory too, so they're, yeah. they're, they're bears. That's true, yeah. Constantly, we were kind of watching our backs. And you know, I had the chance to catch it right here. Remember that? Where it was in this back corner and it got underneath the net. I did not have the net down. Yeah, we didn't realize like what a good opportunity that was no. at the time. I thought I had it right there. And it went back up. See how little water exists there? That, see, yeah, look, right there, you almost caught it barehand. You, and, th and that was you, like. You probably oh. should have caught it right there. Yeah. After that, yeah, probably should have caught yeah. it right there. It was so slippery, though. I remember, like, okay, I abandoned the net at that point, obviously, and I was like, oh, the fish is kind of on the rocks. And I tried to grab it. 
And look at look at the, Ms. Mario's camera at this point. You can see you just kind of point the camera down, and you're like, "Ugh, the fish just." Let's talk about let's gone. talk yeah. about your net real quick. Can you call that a net? Is that is can that be described by any human as a net? I mean, technically, yeah, maybe not to catch a fish of that size. It, it looks more like a giant fan. Yeah. It, it'd be better for like it would have worked. Off. It would have worked better as a fan. <laughs> it's fair to say that. But like I said, I'd seen it done before. Right. But. Let's keep playing the footage. You'll see where it actually ended up working out, and then I'll, and then I'll explain. Seen it done in, in the movies. In the movies? That's real life. At this point, I gave you maybe a 15% chance okay. of catching yeah. the fish again. Yeah, right. Mar Mario, was, uh, his confidence was just dropping like yeah. a rock at this point. Well, so is yeah. yours, Mark. Look yeah. at you. You're not even really filming at this yeah, point. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, gosh. Oh, this is it. <laughs> this is not happening. All right, keep going, keep going. Lost him. Uh, almost, though. Almost. And now look at the pocket yeah. of water it's in. Long stretch. And any crevice in there could go. We don't know how far or how deep those crevices can go. I will give you credit though. Like, like you, you were, you were determined, and that kept us going because I could have easily been convinced to just call it at this point. Well, and I think too at this point, we knew that we had a fish in a pocket of water that we could potentially catch. And you know what we were also talking about at the same time was, you know, this is easy pickings for any animal to come in and eat this fish. So this is how it became a rainbow trout rescue mission, is we need to get it back into the main course of the river because this is quite a ways off of the main stretch. Like this fish would have been marooned in there for a significant time. So now Mark starts going in there. Right. Because definitely having two people in there to kind of spook the fish out. Yeah, we were trying. We were trying to just, you know, get the the fish to show itself. Right. So you could, we could even get eyes on it. And, see and th there that's it was. what it would do. Yeah, we yeah. would get in, and th there you kind of look at it, it's like, oh, this net's not going to work. And then the cycle would repeat itself. Now we're going to make our seventh attempt. And that wouldn't be the last one either. And that, no, this is editing magic right here. You could see Mark getting. See, that's when it got up into this area. We're like, oh, we've got a chance, and then the fish is like, nope. I'm gone. At this point, I couldn't feel my fingers anymore. Look at this, Chance isn't even really filming at that point. I think yeah. we got to the, the, the point where like, this is not gonna happen. I, I think I'm doing everything to like, keep a smile on my face at this point. Cause right. it's so cold, I'm getting so frustrated. I, I'm, I'm pretty much convinced at this point that this is it's totally a waste yeah. of effort. And this is where it happens. You can see where the water's getting more shallow there. You can do it, Coyote, you can do it. Nope. Ooh. That's where it happened. That's I a good one. Douse the camera yep. and see how shallow the water was there. Okay, so pause it, pause it. Here's how the net worked. Once the fish got into shallow water where it was like breaching, I actually laid the shirt down on top of it, right? So that soft nature of the shirt and how wet it was and how heavy it was basically kept the fish in yeah. place. And that's how we were able to actually catch the fish. So I didn't move. scoop it up. At this point, I'm like, just don't lose the fish, yeah. please. <laughs> Whatever you do, just let's, yeah. let's get the scene. Right, so. right. Well, yeah, we're still not out of the water, so to yeah. speak, at this point. That was good. That was like a grizzly bear charge, you know? Yeah. Like charge for the salmon. Right. Yeah, which, you know, man, that was still a lucky catch. Even looking back on it now, it's good job. Okay, so I remember this point. I'm like, I have the fish in my hand under the shirt. I'm like, okay, we got to show people that there, I've got the fish. There we go. Be as gentle as possible. I mean, it's a fragile animal. And they're beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. That was my first time seeing rainbow trout. Their skin doesn't feel scaly like a, like no. a normal fish. It's like, super slippery. Yeah, and very, very, very delicate. Extremely delicate. So we had to be careful here. And this is now the main stretch of the river. So we went across that embankment of rocks, get into the water here, wanted to get the fish. And you know what's important about this is we had to keep that fish underwater the right. whole time. Yeah, we had to keep the oxygen flowing through its gills. Um, these fish are extremely temperamental to being out of water. So, you know, the last thing we wanted was to hurt the fish. So it was a rescue mission and it actually rescued the trout. Are these beautiful trout swimming up river? And here's where I found, you know, like that angler moment where you can kind of hold up the fish and show it. And we're coming upon the moment here that nobody thought was going to happen. I thought it was going to happen. Now, there's a B-roll shot that we actually filmed before the scene, before this presentation. Thank goodness we did that because as you're about to see, we may have had zero B-roll shots. Yeah, it almost still wasn't an episode based on what's about to happen. Keeping their balance. Water just flowing through the gills, and then it burst. Oh, and it was seed. still so cold at this they point, having to submerge my body down into that. I remember shivering in between, like, 
everything that we were doing, just trying to keep my focus. But the adrenaline was going at this yeah. point. Yeah. It took us about three hours to catch this fish, but I did it with your help. That's true. And the makeshift net, and there you have it. One beautiful, beautiful fish. Trout. And a good size. That's, trout, a, that's yeah. a nice trout. That's a, that's a very nice trout. Right Healthy. Now, but I don't want you to drop the fish. No, I don't want to drop the fish either. He's really yeah. <laughs> don't drop the fish. Whatever you do, don't lose the fish, coyote. Oh. oh no, there it goes. The fish was so calm in my hands mm -hmm. and I feel like it knew exactly what it was about yeah. to do. It had built up the strength. I had no chance in the world that, holding on that's to That's what fish. fish do, right? They're, they're gonna wait till they have the opportunity. Right. To, boom. It felt my grip loosen just slightly and like a lightning bolt, it took off. Yeah. Now I think that was fitting though. Yeah, yeah. To, to save the scene, this is what I think and you guys wouldn't know this, but like this is what I'm most impressed about is that you actually nail the outro in one take. One take, one <laughs> take outro. Here it is. Right, let's watch the moment this. That he decided that's it. I'm heading back off into the wild. Wow, what an experience! Working all afternoon to save a rainbow trout out of a maroon pool. Have you guys ever had any up close fish experiences? Tell me about them in the comment section below. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you. Oh, my stay wilds were getting yeah. a little bit better there. Oh man, I was so happy that you nailed the outro yeah. because and you know how many outros? I mean, to be, let's be honest, this was early days. Yeah, it, it, nothing was perfect. Nothing was perfect. We had to do lots of takes. I mean, it wouldn't be uncommon to do ten takes on yeah. the outro. Oh, remember the tarantula episode? Yeah, we won't even get into that. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, the outros can be difficult, guys. Wrapping up what just happened and then releasing the animal back into the wild, but that was you had to run with it on yeah. the fly. It worked out and it ended up. Yeah, yeah. and I think, I think everybody was aware of that we had to get it. Yeah. It was like as soon as the fish escaped, we were like, kind of go to the outro, <laughs> like finish this. Honestly, <laughs> I was embarrassed in that moment. I was so angry with myself in that second when the fish escaped and I was just like, almost like a deer caught in headlights. <laughs> and then it was like, just say something that will close the episode or we don't have it. Yeah. And I did it. And, and then you can see my frustration as I walked off screen. <laughs> we, we've actually utilized that. Oh, that was just the end. Sure. Yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no call to actions yet. Yeah, no call to actions. And now we do like sort of the outro with voiceover yeah, well, giving these epic moments. But. YouTube has changed a lot. I mean, now there's like end plates and right. things like that. Like this was, uh, this was early days. And that, wow. was, that was fun. That was fun taking uh, a trip back to the cold rivers of Montana. And you know, I Beautiful look at this location. episode. I haven't watched that episode probably since it came out. And then we did the salmon episode after mm -hmm. that. And I just look at how the dynamics changed between the trout episode and the salmon episode, what we did different, how we wrote and composed the story yeah. through voiceover ahead of time to sort of lay out the adventure that we had. And Big those difference. were the good old days. Yeah, yeah. But this, the, from that to the salmon ep episode is, is just a huge difference. Right. Right. Yeah, but it's fun to look back on these early videos and you know, we, we were able to do a lot with very little, mm -hmm. you know, we, lack of experience, uh, camera gear was very basic, we had like one uh, action camera and we had one small XA20 which is, you know, not exactly a professional video camera, right. still a good camera, but mm -hmm. you know, we were still able to pull off some pretty great shots. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, go ahead. So, oftentimes with animals and wildlife as, as we've seen, it's all about serendipity, mm -hmm. like we're at the right moment, the right time. Mm -hmm. Even if it takes a long time and the struggle, we often get the footage right. and uh, the episode. And I would yeah. definitely say that for one of our early episodes, while it was incredibly difficult to shoot, it certainly is a piece of work that I'm proud of. You know, and I think you guys are proud of it as well because we didn't give up. And I think that's the real message that comes out of this episode is that that pure determination to make sure we got the episode. And at the end of the day, I mean, I still feel like we saved that fish from that maroon pool. Yeah. Could a massive rainstorm have come in at some point and washed it out of there? Yeah, but it was easy pickings for something like a bear. Yeah, tr trout are pretty tough though. I mean, mm -hmm. they're known to jump across rocks. I mean, I don't Not think- Not that stretch of rocks. Well, I don't think that fish was in peril. Right. But uh, we, I think we certainly helped it out for sure. Yeah. Cool. It was a beautiful fish. Yeah. Well, I think that kind of wraps up another episode of Base Camp. So, everybody out there in the Coyote Pack that's watching, tell us what you think about that episode. Do you want us to maybe revisit the salmon episode? Would it be interesting to compare the two? We do have a couple more of these lined up that we have picked, but like I said in the first episode, tell us what episodes you guys want us to review, and we'll take a deeper look into what it took to make them. Yeah. Absolutely. Outro time. Let's do the outro. We're getting better at this. So remember, I say my name, you say your name, you say your name. How about I'll do the stay wild, see you on the next adventure, all is one thing. Sure.
Let's see if this works. I, I, don't, I don't think we practice three This is people. gonna be clunky. <laughs> I'm Coyote Peterson. I'm Mark Vins. I'm Mario Aldecoa. Be brave. Stay wild. You, you said you were gonna do the whole thing. I know, thing. but I thought it just kind of rhymed you together at that you point. You can't change it in the middle. Stay wild. Stay wild, guys. We'll see you on the next <laughs> base camp adventure. It'll get better. It'll get better. If you thought this episode of Base Camp was entertaining, make sure to go back and watch Rainbow Trout Rescue Mission, where we saved a maroon fish by catching it with a shirt net. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next big adventure.